Bailey here uh, likes to take and lunge, and uh, she nips sometimes and barks to, when she wants to disagree and when she doesn't get her way. Now, her guardians actually have some rules in place, which is pretty unusual for most of my clients, they do not. But she's a rescue dog, she's only been with the family for about a year, so she's got some baggage. Now, uh, the guardians, uh, throughout talking about this, she's tried to nip me anytime I try to move around, because again, I think that she thinks she's in charge. We address that with rules and structure, and the guardians, when we're off camera, are gonna start incorporating those to help her adopt more of a follower's mindset. But she likes to throw a temper tantrum if she doesn't wanna get her way. One of the guardians start working with her with a leave-it exercise, but sometimes when she backs off, when, before they get a chance to pick it up, she snatches it. So I just came up with this technique on, uh, off the top of my uh, head. And what I'm gonna do is, she's being much better behaved now. We've been doing this a little while, this isn't the first time I've done it. But I have the high value treat, which she really likes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it on the floor just out of her reach. As you can see, she's not happy with that. If I respond to her in this capacity, she's gonna be, that's gonna be validating for her. Now she was barking a lot more when she first started doing this. What I'm waiting for her to do is to LAY quietly and to surrender. For a dog, sitting down is a more subordinate position because it puts them at a disadvantage. If I'm a dog and I sit down and you try to grab me, in order for me to run away, I have to lift up my back legs and then start running. That gives you a heads up that I'm trying to move away. So dogs have what want what I call escapability. So if I'm gonna if I don't trust you, I'm not only gonna sit near you if I'm way across the room. So if you get up to try to get me, I have plenty of time to get up and move away. So when a dog sits in this sort of capacity, she's kind of challenging you less. Now if you hear the distinction in her voice is going down a little bit, she's doing a little bit of grumbling under her voice, under her bark, because the barking and lunging at me didn't respond, I didn't respond to it, I didn't even look at her. So that's not clearly working. Dogs are good problem solvers, so she's gonna try to figure out what she has to do to get the treat. Now eventually she'll just, just give up. She'll wire, you know, work herself up to a frenzy, and then that burns a lot of energy, and then she sits down and lays down to con conserve it. What I'm not doing is telling her to SIT or LAY, and I'm not responding at all. I'm waiting for her to do the action alone. As soon as she does, I'm gonna pick up the treat and give it to her. So the lesson is, as long as I challenge for something as a dog, Guaranteed the human is not going to give it to me. But as soon as I stop challenging, immediately the human gives me the treat. Immediately the human gives me the treat. Now at first it's going to be a little, it's me long like this. I'm stretching a little bit because I would like her like, to achieve it in this video. But eventually as you practice, she'll start surrendering faster and faster because she learns that trying to take and force my way to get things doesn't work. No matter how much I strain and pull and reach for it, I guarantee you never ever get. But as soon as I lay down and, and, adopt, and adopt more of a, when the dog lays down, it's almost their way of saying I surrender, I give up. And as soon as she surrenders, I'm gonna reward her for doing that. But if I force her to do it, she's gonna put up a big fight because she's a, she a gladiator, she knows how to battle. Now, there we go. So she's getting closer and closer to it, but she, and she's looking over, her mom is actually sitting right over there, her guardian, and she's trying to get, take her case to a higher court. This is kind of like when a little kid says, mommy, can I spend the night at Timmy's? And uh, mom says no, and so the kid goes and asks dad. And dad's like, sure. So kids are good at, at motivating. So we see we've achieved a much different demeanor and energy level for her, but she hasn't completely surrendered yet, so that's why I'm waiting. Now while I'm doing this, I am not looking at her either. For dogs, look a direct eye contact being interpreted as a challenge. Um, so I don't want to do that. I want to just become, act like she's invisible. Now the other thing we don't want to do is have a lot of distractions going on in the room. We don't want to have people eating, for sure. Now I'm going to have uh, the, uh, the guardian actually is going to pan over here to show what we have on the floor over here. So you can kind of tilt the camera a little bit over here. Now this is London. London is still eating a bully stick. So London is not involved in the picture. Now let's go ahead and come back to me. London started to get up. She tried to, London tried to take it a couple times. I disagreed and didn't allow that to happen. It's important that the dog sees that I am impartial and I'm gonna protect her treat from her and I'm gonna protect her bully stick from her. But again, I'm hearing this, this is full blown now, but those first couple when she was coming in the play bow were a lot quieter. So basically, I would recommend the guardians practice this a couple times a day. Now, when dogs uh, learn things, they actually categorize what they learn while they sleep. 
So when you're practicing with a dog, it's always best, number one, to always end on a good repetition. And number two, not practice it again until the dog has slept, whether it's a nap or a full or not a sleep, but either one works. Now, um, let me see, what else? Um, she's got a lot of spirit. Always outlasting your dog is one of the dog behavior secrets I learned a long time ago. And this is a good illustration. If I give in and she's protesting and protesting, it's 15 minutes, and then I'm tired of hearing it, and I got to get up and use, get to the bathroom or get to eat dinner, she just, I just taught her being defiant gets your way. So I'm going to wait in this exercise until she completely LAYs. And again, I'm not telling her to SIT or LAY. And as soon as she does that, then she gets the reward. Eventually, she'll start doing it faster and faster. So what I'd like the guardians to do, this would be ideal to have everybody in the house doing this with her once a day. So now we have three people basically doing it with her once a day. And now we have a much calmer demeanor. And now we can assign a command word for this. You could say leave it when you give her the command, uh, when you pop the treat in her mouth. Whenever you have a treat, make sure you wait until that treat touches the lips before you say the command word. And say it the same way and the same word, preferably one word command. So maybe ignore would be a better command for that. Um, and so the dog understands, if I say ignore, this means ignore the trash can. This means ignore the baseball, ignore this, ignore that. So this is a little bit longer video than I would like, but this is a version of a leave it exercise that you can do that can teach the dog that calmness is rewarded and barking and trying to take it and force and challenging is absolutely not gonna get their way. All right, go ahead and stop.